for up to two months. Now we'll cross live to the Senate courtyard in Canberra. This is Adam Bant and Andrew Wilkie. Regardless of their gender or sexuality. And it passed because uh, Republicans and Democrats worked together cooperatively across the Parliament to get the legislation through. And as we kick off this year here, uh, on the next sitting day, um, the first private members bill that is going to be introduced to the Parliament this year uh, will come from Andrew Wilkie and myself, and it will be a bill that will uh, remove discrimination from the Marriage Act in Australia, uh, but also make it crystal clear that uh, churches will be under no obligation to marry people if they consider that it would be contrary to uh, their religion or their practices. Uh, we'll be moving the bill uh, and we think it's a good bill. Uh, we think it's the best of the proposals that's out there. But we will not be moving for it to go to a vote immediately. Um, my concern is that if we rush this, uh, we may miss one of the best opportunities we have to see reform. Uh, but conversely, I am confident that if we do this properly, do it in a way that's got the support of people from across the chamber, we are going to see reform in Australia this year. Um, of course, because of the stance that the Labor Party has taken, we now need um, free-minded coalition members of parliament to come on board and support the bill. Uh, I and Andrew will be spending the next uh, couple of months talking to members of the coalition to get members to come and co-sponsor our bill. We believe that the best way forward on this is a bill that's co-sponsored um, by members of parliament from all parties uh, and from independents as well. Uh, it would be a mistake to rush ahead with debate on this issue uh, because at the moment, given that we know the um, stand of the uh, coalition, until coalition members are granted a free vote, um, pressing ahead with this simply to get it to a vote uh, would be uh, doomed to failure. Uh, and I'm also concerned when you look at some of the recent statements um, from others um, that we might end up going down the road of civil unions, which would be a second-class outcome, and we don't want to end up there. Um, so I'm very pleased that the first private member's bill um, of the year will be to push for marriage equality in Australian law. Um, I'm very pleased to stand next to Adam and uh, to co-sponsor this marriage equality bill. Um, it's obviously a very important bill to do with a very important matter. Um, so important that it's, it's vital that the parliament represents the will of the community on this. Uh, it is vital that every member uh, of the parliament is able to follow their conscience when the time comes uh, to vote for this marriage equality bill. Now, the Prime Minister, to her credit, uh, is allowing a conscience vote for uh, members of the ALP. Um, I would remind Tony Abbott that it is Liberal Party policy that any member of the Liberal Party can follow his or her conscience on any vote in the Parliament. So, in effect, in effect the Liberal Party members already have a conscience vote on this. Um, and I think it would be very helpful at this point in time for the opposition leader to come out uh, and to affirm his support for that important Liberal Party rule that every member of the Liberal Party can follow his or her conscience uh, on every vote. Uh, it, it is only really a, a significant issue for members of the opposition uh, front bench, but it certainly should not be any issue at all uh, as far as party rules go for a Liberal backbencher to vote in support of marriage equality. Now, um, Another important piece of government business will be debated next week, and that is my motion, uh, which is in fact to protect the rights of the churches. Um, because al although I feel uh, very supportive, very strongly in favour of amending the Marriage Act to allow the marriage of same-sex couples, I and, I, and I think most uh, people in favour, of, if not all people in favour of marriage equality, would agree that we must be respectful of the rights of the churches, and at the end of the day, they are private institutions who must retain uh, the right to decide who they marry. So this motion, which is up for debate next week uh, and which complements Adams and my bill, uh, will be to get an expression of the Parliament uh, or support for the idea that any a change to the Marriage Act 
must not in any way diminish the rights of churches to decide uh, who they will marry. Mr Ben, Well, both of you. Labor's going to introduce this same bill on Monday. Any Labor MPs who support it are going to respond to the Labor bill, not your bill. That bill will have an inbuilt protection for the churches, like Mr Wilkie's motion. Why don't you just cooperate with the Labor bill and what do you say to those who think you're trying to politic on this issue and get in ahead of the ALP on the same issue? Oh, well, look, we... Um I think you would know that I mean, one of the first things that I did on getting elected was introduce a motion into Parliament on this issue and we had the best part of the year debating it and it was something that uh, for me was part of my election campaign in Melbourne. It's something that uh, we and uh, Sarah Hanson-Young in the Senate have been pushing for for some time. Um, but what we've also said is there's no point putting things in and rushing to a vote just to prove a point. We want to see reform to the law. Um, we, the best way we're going to get this through is by cooperation. Um, we had a meeting set up this morning with Stephen Jones and he cancelled it. Um, I would be quite happy to talk about co-sponsorship. Indeed, that's been our invitation from the beginning. The best chance we're going to have of um, getting this through is by everyone working together, and that's our point. Well, you've got one bill. He's got his own bill coming in on Monday. Already there seems to be a fight for the, for the honours on this. Well, my... Um, concern is that uh, I want to make sure that, uh, that we avoid this happening, which is um, that a bill goes up for a vote um, sooner than is uh, the best time because it's done before Liberal MPs are allowed a conscience vote. We lose it and then the Labor Party steps up and says, together with the Liberal Party, and says let's now move to civil unions and entrench two tiers of uh, citizenship in this country. Um, if you were cynical, you might say that might be what some pe that's what some people want. Um, we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. And the best way of doing that uh, is by having our bill. I'm going to propose that the bill be referred to the Senate inquiry so that we can look at uh, our bill, look at Stephen Jones's bill, look at the other Greens bill in the Senate, and there can then be a discussion about which is the best bill. And um, if it's the case that we all come together and get behind one bill, I'm less concerned about whose it is and who it is who's moving it. I just want to make sure that we see reform in this area and that we don't see um, grandstanding, we don't see things pushed to a vote prematurely and we don't lose the best chance we've got. Mr. If the ben Coalition already has the option of voting with its conscience, then who in the Coalition are you lobbying and who do you expect to cross the floor? Have you spoken to anyone yet? Yeah, I, I don't want to name names, um, but I've spoken to people, and I expect Andrew has as well, in the Coalition... Um, who believe that an individual should have the right to uh, do what they like in their own private life, provided it doesn't impact on someone else. I mean, it's a basic tenet of the Liberal Party to believe in freedom of choice, uh, and there are those who uh, would be inclined to support the bill. They're um, potentially hamstrung at the moment because um, Tony Abbott, contrary to the uh, position of his party, uh, is attempting to coerce all the MPs to vote in a particular way because he sees some political advantage out of that. Now, that is wrong. It is contrary to what the Liberal Party should do. Uh, and I am hopeful that after the Senate inquiry, um, when we can perhaps allay some of the doubts and we can explore all the issues and have a look at what the best way forward is, some of those people who privately support us will turn out publicly to support um, us. Have you spoken to your colleague Sir Hanson Young on this? Is it not yeah. a bit odd for the Greens to have two bills on one issue? No, we're moving a bill in the Senate and we're moving a bill in the House and the, uh, the bill in the House um, uh, picks up the point that uh, Andrew has made about enshrining the protection for the churches and uh, so it's different to the one that's in the Senate at the moment and, but we believe that's the one that's got the best chance of support. What has made you believe that the, um, the Labor bill will um, be voted on immediately? There was some suggestion that there will be a bit of a delay. Why have you moved on this so abruptly? Well, I'm... I'm, I'm uh, concerned that uh, there might be some who want to push it to a vote quickly. Um, I mean, I wonder why there was an announcement between the uh, government whip and the opposition whip that they're preparing a bill to get ready for civil unions. Surely, if the Labor Party was serious about it, they'd be getting behind their own private members' bill. So I'm concerned uh, that... Uh, to make sure that we do what's got the best chance of success, not something that's just about pushing this off the radar um, so it's out of the way before an election year. What the Coalition went with a conscience vote. How many MPs do you think you could get across the floor on a conscience vote? If they did have a conscience right. vote... What's your assessment of the numbers there? I think um, we'd be close to being able to pass the bill. Only close? Not you'd... 
don't know. Well, I think we've got, that's why I say, I think we'll give it a couple of months, allow the Senate inquiry to report. That may allay some fears. I think that might then bring a few more over the line. Uh, and I'm uh, optimistic that by the end of the year we could see the law changed. Why not wait for the outcome of the Senate inquiry into your party's own bill and then amend that bill if necessary to add the protections for churches? Well, because this way we are able to put our bill before the Senate inquiry and the Senate inquiry can look at it and decide whether that's the best way to go. Mr. But have you made up your mind how you'll vote on the private health insurance bill? Uh, yes, I, I indicated yesterday uh, that I'm leaning towards supporting uh, the means test of the private health insurance. Um, now, I, I, I think it was July last year when this was first, uh, uh, first before the Parliament, or expected to come before the Parliament, I said I would support it then. Um, because six months has passed, I have needed to look afresh at all of the evidence uh, and the new evidence, uh, and also to be mindful of uh, you know, the feedback I've received from constituents in my electorate since then. Um, I've almost complete, completed that process, um, and I can say that I am inclined to support it, as I said I would do six months ago, um, but I am not able to confirm my support just yet. I've still got a bit more material to, to wade through. The Health Minister provided me with some... Uh, more modelling and figures just last night. Would well, you support splitting the bill? Um, the rebate and the no, I, I, um, I wouldn't support the Greens' move to split um, the bill because I don't see any contradiction be, uh, in, the, in the two parts, as, as much as there are two parts currently. Uh, I think the move to increase uh, the surcharge on high-income earners without private health insurance is entirely consistent with the, the, the move to means test uh, the rebate for those who do take out uh, private health insurance. So uh, I am looking at the bill as it is, and I'm inclined to support it as it is. I can't confirm that just yet. I hope to soon, uh, and I wouldn't support a Greens move to split the bill. I, I don't see uh, the need to do that. When you say you're leaning towards, is it an 80% lean, a 60% lean? What sort of angle are we on here? We're almost there. Um, but have you made your mind up about the ABCC bill? You were last night in negotiations with the government about potentially passing it? Look, uh, continuing to have discussions with the government about um, the uh, bill to uh, go some way towards fixing the um, uh, appalling situation we have where workers in the building industry have less rights than accused criminals. Um, I think we're at the point where uh, when you have a number of you have myself uh, and a number of other crossbenchers who've made their position clear. We're probably at the point where um, if the McCarthyist era coercive powers remain in the legislation, it'll be because the Labor Party wants them to. Um, uh, I, of course, want to see uh, meaningful reform, but I just want to make sure it's not a rebadging exercise. I'm waiting on the uh, government to get back to us about some, uh, some issues, and we'll take it from there, and I expect those discussions will continue over the next few days. Look, I, um, I intend, uh, unless something changes between now and the, the vote, I intend to support uh, the Greens' amendment because I agree with the Greens. Uh, there should not be coercive powers uh, with a body such as this. It's not a police body. It's not a crime and conduct commission. You know, it's a, it's, it's a body to look at conduct in the building industry. Uh, it is not the place to have coercive powers. So I will support the Greens' attempt to remove those powers. Um, but having said that, at the end of the day, I, I broadly support the government's move to reform this. I think that it's the decision to set up the ABCC under the Howard uh, era was, was a bad decision, and I'll be happy to see it uh, wound back. Thanks very much. I think we're done. Thank you very much. So that was the Greens MP Adam Band and the Independent MP Andrew Wilkie live from Parliament House in Canberra. Now we